This video is sponsored by the Curiosity Stream Nebula Bundle, where you can find my brand new exclusive full length original video for Metal Gear Solid's introduction slash first mission slash title sequence. It's my favorite game of all time, so I've had some words. Click the link at the top of the description to sign up. Awesome that we're opening an MCU movie with Mandarin and the first English words aren't even spoken until 9 minutes and 41 seconds into the movie. It's great, shake it up. Prove that Marvel audiences aren't dummies and are willing to read subtitles. Because we are. Or, or we aren't dummies, but we'll read subtitles. Although while I'm already talking about being a dummy, I'm just gonna apologize up front for my terrible pronunciations. I'm really gonna try my best. I looked up as many pronunciations as I could, but you know, it's supposed to be shang chi right? Or shang chi but that sounds wrong when I say it. So I'm just gonna say shang chi Okay, I was getting hero vibes anyway, but now you're just asking me to remember how beautiful and tragic Broken Sword was. And he definitely hasn't achieved the highest level of swordsmanship this time. But I love that the first introduction to the Ten Rings holds back the visuals just a tad. While we do see how cool they are, the battle is obscured by dust and shaky cam. Which is both a silly lampshade for why we've never heard of them, but also a funny and realistic reason for Trevor to show back up. I'll be honest, even seeing the cute pictures of the Talo creatures, I was not prepared for how fantastic they are. Yes! Not that we ever need a reason for martial arts to crouching tiger all over the hidden dragon, but Shang-Chi plants itself firmly in Wuxia by giving Shang-Chi's mother martial arts from the gods. That was a lot of words. I like that they fly around as if not restrained by our physical laws, but in a style that is very familiar to Chinese martial arts films. And her Tai Chi style is so fluid and serene compared to what we get from Shang-Chi later. Not to mention the mid-fight flirting we often get. So, flirting? The greatest insult into the koi pond with you and your bracelets. Hugging and flirting are automatic wins, so I think cute baby should be too, and that is a cute baby, so. You mean Sisu? That was it, by the way, the first English spoken word. Feels appropriate after we were just told a glorious epic in Mandarin. Ah, so close, Sean. Sadly, you only have Peck Lin in common with Crazy Rich Asians. Give me the key. <laughs> Window is down, but she still locks the door. Quick thinking, Nora. I'm the Asian Jeff Gordon. And she probably knows too much about NASCAR and not enough about Singapore's 2022 Grand Prix. It probably would be her first Grand Prix. Comes out of nowhere, steps right between us, and starts screaming the lyrics to Hotel California. So that's a great tactic. And also, she did the other guy a favor, clearly. And also, is everyone up to date on the magicians? Because they also distract people trying to hurt them by breaking into song. Can't imagine that'll come up again. No way. Yeah, we can be responsible when we do that. Or... <laughs> Priorities. Yeah, solid, albeit self-indulgent karaoke jam. To be fair, I would do an Aladdin song too. At least a Little Mermaid one. All right, this soundtrack is off to a killer start. First, Rich Brian and Earth Gang hit us with a little traditional, what sounds to me like a guccin, to more closely align with the opening of this film, and then slides into a hip-hop song for Sean to work out to. And JJ Lin is just some killer walking music. Wow, too real, Marvel. Too real. Moving on is an American idea. Well, then I must not be fully American because I'm not over Mufasa. I know what you're talking about, dude. Smart. His first instinct was to pretend like he doesn't even speak Mandarin. He doesn't reach for the pendant. Hey, the best way to win a fight is to walk away. You have the wrong guy. Does he look like he can fight? Apparently Aquafina missed his morning push-ups. Does he look like he can fight? But also, yup. Yup, it does. Simu is somewhere between Jet Li's quickness and Jackie Chan's, well, he's also super fast, but more so his use of his environment. So I'm gonna try and grade this fight as we're going. Ah, so you don't just grade flips. Go flip! Yeah! <laughs> Classic fighting stance. Double knockout. Drago 2.0 with a Barrett arm? My first thought was, uh-oh, they left the temp track in, but it actually does a great job of not being distracting while still setting tone. Loving the way the what feels like a wide-angle lens follows Shang-Chi around the bus. Look, Simu isn't actually hanging off a runaway bus, but it still feels like a good time to point out that he did most of his own stunts, especially everything in this bus fight. And don't get me wrong, it's a real bus and they really smashed it into cars in San Francisco, so props. Open the door, please. Politeness? Yes, sir. I love this extended shot from outside the bus. Showcases the confinement he'd be feeling, but also how outmatched these chumps actually are. Old boy hallway fight vibes. Hey, look at his sword reflected in his sclera. I can't be totally sure, but when you slow it down, it looks like this is when Razorface steals the pendant, since it's not on Shang-Chi's neck in the slow-mo shot. Also, dope kick. We make a good team. Yeah, teamwork. Where are you going? Macau. 
Macau? Yeah, Aquafina knows what's up. Fun word to say, Macau. I knew Shang-Chi was a man of taste when I saw the Warriors poster, but Outcast, Stankonia, and Kung Fu Hustle? I have to take that as a sign. This is the year. I know you've all been clamoring, and I need to do it. This is the year we finally get Stankonia on vinyl. I was willing to do anything he wanted. Such a red herring setup where his dad is this clear-cut bad guy just sending his minor son out in a hit. What we learn later doesn't so much exonerate him or vilify Shang-Chi as blur the lines a bit. You'll have the beef. Yes. And, beef. and the beef. Two beefs. You know who likes two beefs? Macau. Did you go through with it? Ha! He doesn't actually say no, and in Lies Have to Be Spoken Out Loud to be Lies Land, that's not a lie. And Macau still looks tight. Also, best place to get my milk, Macau. Sorry, okay, we're done. Mmm, street food. Julia, do we have any soup dumpling? Fight sh scaffolding, I mean, scaffolding shadow, I mean, sc scaffolding fight shadowing. Oh, all good. I speak ABC. Oh, great. I'm John John. John, John. Okay, so he has Pecklin and Eddie, but that's gotta be it. I like your spike face. Compliments. You know, you can look at this as just a fun reference to Iron Man 3 with Killian's test subjects, but the truth is that it's entirely possible there are extremist goons walking around out there, and she's the same actress from Black Widow, so she's for sure a widow. Abomination? He got a fin upgrade. That hurt, Emil. Oh, wow, so he really is Emil Blonsky. Tim Roth is even credited on IMDb. Oh my gosh, Tim Roth is returning for She Hulk? Orphan Black is playing She Hulk? Where have I been? This day just got so much better. Sling ring genuity. You got this. You got this. Don't be nervous. Thank you. Dang it, Simu is just so likable. Great martial artist, great actor. You don't usually get funny, too. Leave some awesome for the rest of us, bruh. Wow, so they're keeping him in a Hulk Loki cage. I don't hate where this is going. Simu Leo's workout routine. All the way from San Francisco, you. Nothing like watching amazingly talented athletes kick the snot out of each other while looking beautiful. <laughs> Nice takedown. Oh, way better takedown. <laughs> Encouragement. You're like such a badass. Everything that you do is like so cool. Though. Agreed. I like your pants. More compliments. Okay, now we're really getting Jackie Chan-esque. Using the plank to take out two goons and then uses another goon as a bridge? Also, just the sheer amount of punishment he takes reminds me of Jackie. Chaotic, fast-paced fighting. And this isn't an all martial arts movies are the same thing. This is the purest compliment I can come up with because we don't get Jackie Chan movies like First Strike, Police Story, or Rumble in the Bronx much anymore, and a lot of this feels like a direct homage. Okay, I love that. They broke the 180 degree rule, but did it in the reflection so your brain still tracks with what's going on, even if you don't know it's a reflection until the goon strikes. Also, Eagle's callback. On a dark desert highway. Sisu could really use some water to jump fly off of right about now. Ah, hang on. Ah! Saving your bestie with the power of parkour. Yeah. Saving that girl with the great pants with the power of horizontal bar skills. I like your pants. Again with this sticky camera following them both doing parkour. I think I need to be singing the praises of the camera operator. So good job, camera operator. That was uh, singing, uh, singing, singing for you. Oh. And this one take passing focus from Shaolin to Shang-Chi? Did America make you soft? I mean, define soft. So cool, and yet also somehow creepy. Who has two thumbs and loves a silhouette fight? This guy, well, you can't see me, but you can imagine, duh, silhouette fight. Ah, didn't get his cheek that time. I love that he gets this victory over Death Dealer right here and now. That arc is complete and it doesn't matter who's behind the mask or what happens to him after this. We didn't need another secondary boss antagonist with what's coming and there's no reason for him to not be superior to Death Dealer at this point. Also a hint that he'd be willing to kill outside of necessity, setting up his resolution for later. Let's go home. You might be asking yourself, why did Wen Wu trick Shang-Chi into coming to Macau since it would just make retrieving Shaolin's pendant that much harder? Well, this way he doesn't have to go all the way to America with his full force to get him. Because, let's be honest, the full force was gonna get him. If my dad won't let me into his empire, I'm gonna build my own. A little Zhang Bao Yu shadow in here? Without the racist character father this time, of course. But because he didn't know my actual name, he invented a new one, the Mandarin. He gave his figurehead the name of a chicken dish. Fans were pissed about Trevor, and I always appreciate filmmakers trying to make good. This, this makes pretty good. Ha, <laughs> love the desaturated gray and brown background of his real compound contrasted against the idyllic faux backdrop as if it were all still a front, hiding the truth underneath. Or maybe Lee just hadn't moved in yet, but now that she has, the entire compound has taken on color, life, and warmth. And a family montage is the fastest way to destroy my soul. I could feel her breath on my cheek. Sorrow takes all shapes, folks. 
All right, so there's air bending and water bending. I mean, do you have any idea how insane this is? And every time you think you can feel for the dude, he does something like this and just totally unredeems himself. What if that's right? More subtle, maybe not so subtle, hints about which way she leans. Oh, hello, loves. Really had no idea Trevor was in this, and I love it. Such a great way to sort of correct a questionable earlier MCU choice. Then my dad broke you out. Exactly. To kill you. Exactly. <laughs> Honesty. I can see you. You're real. All this time I thought I was hallucinating him. Morris, the six-legged headless bear cub with four Pegasus wings not being anything other than me trying to describe a fever dream nightmare was a surprise. And obviously a wife win. But even if that chicken pig is right. Look, I'll give you chicken, like just out of the oven, but still covered in feathers chicken, but pig, get out of here with that. What do you know? Razor Foot is environmentally conscious. I kinda like this guy. Man, he turns it around. So let's get a Katie Razor Femur romance in Shang-Chi too. They were simply acting. As if they were riding horses, I still can't get my head around it, to be honest. This whole bit is such a great example of why this movie is so fun. Also, it makes you start to feel for Trevor even more. He's just a well-meaning doofus who wants to do his passion. But he really is a doofus. How close is it? Five meters! Stay in the pocket! What is that in faith? Relatable. Yes, the majority of the world uses the metric system, and yes, I should learn it, but I've, I've, I've got stuff going on. Yes, Razor Flesh has solid taste in 90s music. A little bummed SDP's Vaseline didn't play through this set piece, but still happy with the nod. Morris says... Great job, everyone. And Trevor is just the picture of cool-headedness. You should speed up. The forest eats us. Eats us? What does that mean? It says it eats us. Go left. Some similarity between the sling ring portal design and this dimensional one leading to Talo. It may have taken half the movie, but this is where Julia was 100% in. If nine-tailed foxes don't win you over, what will? That's a weird horse. Nah. And I mean, those lion-looking things definitely eat Morris's species, right? What? Is that who I think it is? The landlord's husband? All right, it's, it's going on the schedule. Okay, let's see. I've been doing this for a while. How about July 1st? Good. Sounds good. Shiny mom. And you look the same as you did 20 years ago. Welcome to Talo, Katie. Oh. Hugging. Glad Mrs. Young finally accepts Pecklin. All right, maybe I spoke too soon. A little Garden of Eden here, where the lion lies with a six-legged headless bear cub with four Pegasus wings. Downright biblical. It's like every time I get moderately good at something, I just quit and start something new. Okay, except if you're an exceptionally good driver and have proven it on multiple occasions at this point. That sounds like a Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott quote. Sick comic accurate armor. She ain't wrong. Archery is legit difficult, especially with traditional bows. No pulleys to take the weight off your draw here. Michelle Yeoh still has it at 60. Like, really has it. And can also get it, like, whenevs. I love the symbolic difference between the Wing Chun that Shang-Chi was taught by his father versus the Chai Chi of his mother with just the opening of a fist. Changes everything about the style. Shang-Chi, don't fear. Smart to keep the contents of this memory for later when Shang-Chi really needs it. And that's how you get your PG-13 rating, having the fight take place in the blurry mirror. Because he isn't just Wing Chunning or hung ing them. Your dad trained you to be an assassin when you were seven. He sent you on a hit at 14. You realize how messed up that is, right? And look, she's right. I love that she clarifies this. Shang-Chi was a minor for sure. But it's not exactly the same as we were led to believe where Wen Wu was sending his son off on some random assassination mission. She would hate the person I've become. And now he's coming to destroy her home. And as much as I do have sympathy for Wen Wu, the fact that he allows himself to be tricked into believing Li would want him to destroy her home shows that he's still just as obsessed with power and vengeance as ever before. Shang-Chi clearly understands her much better. Aww, oh, that's such a cutie getting all armored up. I swear if this filthy boy gets hurt. Even the animals know these are the bad guys, scurrying away, tails down. I know my wife's voice. Rough, because clearly he doesn't, which kind of makes us even sadder. <laughs> Usually that would mean a long time, but if I really think about it, 10 of my lifetimes is way too long. I can't imagine giving college a try 10 times. Burn it down. No one ever didn't look cool saying burn it down and walking away. <laughs> That's right, get him, fluffy boy. Teamwork! I'm not afraid of you. 
Yes, you are. Oof. I think it's hard to fully grasp how evil that line is. The power fathers have over their kids can be immeasurable. Even as adults, it's hard to not see our fathers as these supernatural beings, so when they tell you that you're afraid, it's very hard to not believe them. And most of our dads aren't even supernatural. Most. Mine is. Not sure about the rest of you suckers. You stood at a window and watched her die! Jump the gun on the terrible things you can say to your child. Ooh, he's fast. Yep, into this. But you chose those damn rings over us! Dang, hit him right in the dads. We know he's got abs, but there's nothing quite like a full-on actual gut punch. It's a, it's a real bad time. I haven't talked about how Wenwu uses the rings to basically fly? They propel him off of stuff, and then he uses the force of blasting them into his landing spot to slow himself down and cushion his landing. Pretty resourceful. Phew. Speaking of even sadder, Wen Wu really shows us how not processing trauma and not accepting one's own actions can really lead to catastrophe. Because, <laughs> come on, this is 12D chess levels of denial. Solid way of instantly upping the stakes. The beasties can't be killed with regular weapons, and they just soul murked Death Dealer. Which continues the long history of badass characters being taken out in just the most unceremonious way. At least we know Death Dealer is for sure 100% dead. Just like uh, Boba Fett. Oh, no, Solid advice. <laughs> Ah, now we can call him Dragon Razor, D Dragon Scale Fist, Dragon Razor Scale Forearm? <laughs> Did he just rhyme in English but say the line in Mandarin? <laughs> Deep cut. Love the visualization of the air bubbles going into his nose as if the Great Protector is giving him underwater CPR. I initially thought this dragon might be evil, but now I'm getting real Falcor vibes, which is where it's at. A somewhat more violent Falcor, but still. <laughs> Even the younger Talo people have a wait the drill? look on their faces. Auntie Nan is just happy to see her old friend again. <laughs> now that's teamwork. I want a lion dog thing, teammate. Do I see just a touch of pride in his face? Just the tiniest little dab of pride? <laughs> Trevor went from being a throwaway buffoon to troll the audience in Iron Man 3 to someone with actual stakes who I actually care about. Also, Sad Morris wasn't something I was ready for. Calm down, mate. I'm not dead, it's just a performance. Now get down here, play along. And Shang-Chi changes the ring's color to the same golden that his mother did, which probably creates a mix of pride and one final gut punch to Wenwu. <laughs> ah, just when you think you'd got him, you actually just gave up your only weapon. Love how he falls to the ground after the blast since Shang-Chi kept the rings. <laughs> Fake out, Hadouken? Your family needs you. Ouch, another kick to the dads. See? Told you the magicians wouldn't come up again. Nothing at all related here. Shit. Appropriate reaction. <laughs> Whatever, I'm going to get some souls, you jerk. The one downside of riding a dragon is that everything else would be super boring after riding a dragon. Oh, you had a kid? Cool, I rode a dragon. What do we think a soul tastes like? Let me know in the comments. No, I will honor you, landlord. I promise. Soul sucking. Wait, no, sorry. He's, he's a bad guy. But still, TDID could Kong GP's job, but he really wants that soul. Nora getting it done. Solid character payoff for someone trying to find their purpose. Holy sh! Another appropriate reaction. Skadoosh. Oh gosh, that's way worse than a skadoosh. There's an arm, and there's a another piece. And even if it's a comic book movie, there are consequences. Hugging. Oh crap, so that wasn't just the adrenaline? There really is a dragon in our lake? That's crazy, man, I swim in that lake. Wait, is that what happened to my cousin? You said he went to the upstate farm dimension. Sean's auntie, who's, who's this awesome magical kung fu goddess. Magical tai chi goddess, but still accurate. And then Sean used the ten rings to like do this like crazy kamehameha fireball. I love that they live in a world that survived the blip, but the reference to something cool is still Dragon Ball. We made it. We made it. The delivery and tone they both take on for this story is so spot on to sound ridiculous. Chang Chi. Uh, here, present. Ha, <laughs> his present is fantastic. Still just a kid looking in from the outside, even though he saved the, the, the world, the multiverse, to save something. We have a lot to talk about. You too. You earned it, Wong. I'll demo you for them. He won't. I love that these two get to stay loving friends and there's no forced romantic subplot. Water-based Shang-Chi style credits. I'm so sorry, I have to deal with this. You can get my number from Bruce. It was so nice to meet you. Typical. Karaoke with Wong? Suckers are living out my dreams. 
big fan of the way the camera spins around her to reveal that she's in her father's chair, mimicking his scene from earlier. And she's got some widows, huh? Can't blame her. Shang-Chi is awesome. Genuinely so much fun. Marvel doesn't miss very often, but Shang-Chi isn't exactly their biggest property and they nailed it. Performances are top flight, design is killer. Frankly, I'm shocked more superheroes don't wear sneakers because when I saw Shang-Chi riding a dragon wearing sneakers, I thought, yeah, obviously they're comfortable. Who wants to ride a dragon in uncomfortable boots? And this interpretation of the rings is just plain awesome. Not only does it open things up for different looking fight scenes, but they just plain look cool. Which brings us to the fight scenes. We already talked about how they pay homage to Wuxia, and I can't confirm this since I love those films, but it feels more accessible than some of them. Like there's tight choreography and camera work, but enough comedic dialogue and general excitement to keep everyone intrigued. If I had to complain about anything, the final baddie is a little underwhelming. I mean, the design is scary as heck, but I was hoping the Dweller in Darkness was gonna be a little closer to the one I was used to in the comics, but alas. Honestly, the Dweller in Darkness's appearance just hints even more at Mephisto showing up someday in the MCU, and I understand why they couldn't introduce a complex villain in the last act anyway. Wen Wu is a fantastic villain in that you understand why he does the things he does, and yet you still yell at him and dislike him for doing them. One of the things lots of folks were talking about regarding Shang-Chi was its course correction for both the MCU's version of the Mandarin, but also just the original Marvel character in general. It was always pretty problematic, and this movie did it right. Wen Wu's explanation at the dinner is fantastic. And it's sort of bananas that they rewrite the origin of the entire MCU. The Ten Rings captured Tony in Iron Man 1, so now we know for sure they weren't the real Ten Rings. And I also love what they did with Trevor and that he's still alive. I feel like it shows Marvel can not only laugh at themselves, but also improve on past choices. Simu is a fantastic lead and sold his character the whole way. Just a very relatable dude. No matter how much Buddy kicks, I still feel like I want to chill with him? He and Aquafina have great chemistry and you feel like they're really friends. Tony Leung and Michelle Yeoh are legends and it was nice to see them both get some screen time in a Marvel film. Zhang Mengnyar killed it as Jia Ling and I'm stoked to see what they do with her character in the future. Just an all around solid, fun action film that would probably work really well as a game? Shang-Chi has appeared in a few video games, but nothing devoted explicitly to him, not like, say, Solid Snake? Snake? Look, he's no master of the Ten Rings, but Snake is a sneaker, and that's precisely how his tactical espionage action game opens. And if you want to see me break out my PS3 and play through that opening and talk about all the incredible details and how MGS revolutionized gaming and also my life, well then, head over to Nebula because I just published a full-length, 12-minute Nebula exclusive video essay of sorts doing just that. Here's a taste. Taking benzos to steady your hand on a sniper rifle, a psychic who could move your controller, fighting tanks and choppers, falling in love with a ginger goddess who just got you, I and then Colonel Campbell and nails home the message of the game. You better hide somewhere. And then you have to do that for longer than you'd probably expect. And if you don't hide or you oh, didn't- gotta censor that, too graphic for YouTube obviously uncensored on Nebula. And it'll only ever be on Nebula, our streaming service that gives you an ad-free, sponsor-free viewing experience of all my YouTube videos, as well as three exclusive videos with a lot more coming. Working on a Spider-Man original right now, in fact. And this is all possible because of our bundle deal with CuriosityStream, where if you sign up with my link below, you'll get access to CuriosityStream and Nebula for free. And for CinemaWinds fans, it's 26% off the regular annual plan, making it less than $15 for an entire year's subscription. I don't think I ever explained this that well. It's $15 one time, and you get 12 months of ad-free and exclusive content. Once you get on CuriosityStream, you should watch Becoming Human, a series all about AI love and whether Julia will replace me with a robot at some point. It's surprisingly funny as well as informative about where AI and relationships might be headed. So click the link in the description, curiositystream.com slash cinemawins, sign up for CuriosityStream, and you'll get your free Nebula account that you'll have as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. I'm super excited about this MGS video, and I'm pretty proud of it. Talking about games is something I've wanted to do for a while, and Nebula is allowing me to do that. That's why I believe in it, and I want it to keep succeeding. So click the link on screen, sign up and save 26%, $1.25 per month, and you'll get all of CuriosityStream and Nebula. Thanks! Chickens are bitches, dude. And I'm not a chicken. You're not a chicken. Bok, bok, bitch. Bok, bok, bitch. Chickens are bitches! <laughs>